Hi, my name is David Hershkowitz, and I'm a research fellow with the New Age Skin Research Foundation. Today we are sitting with Dr. Joshua Fox, who is medical director and founder of Advanced Dermatology PC. Dr. Fox is president of the New Age Skin Research Foundation, as well as a leading authority in the field of dermatology. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Fox. Thank you for inviting me. Today we'll be talking about psoriasis. Dr. Fox, what exactly is psoriasis? David, thank you. So psoriasis is a chronic autoimmune disease. Autoimmune means the body fights itself. And by fighting itself, it causes the wrong messages to go out to the body so that we get these scaly conditions throughout the body. Dr. Fox, would you say anyone is weird or different since they have this condition? Psoriasis is a very common condition. It affects over 2% of the population and, and perhaps even a higher percentage of the white population. So people that have it, they should not feel weird. This is a common condition, much like acne is a common condition. What would you say are some of the general causes? The cause for psoriasis is unknown. However, there are many precipitating factors for psoriasis. That means these are things that may cause it to come out. Psoriasis is thought to be largely genetic. It means those people who are predisposed for it, those are the people that these precipitating factors will cause it to come out. However, if they don't have the genetic predisposition, even with these precipitating factors, it will not come out. The most common precipitating factor is that of trauma, which we describe as the Kebner phenomena, named after Dr. Kebner in which if one were to traumatize or cut an area of the skin, that is where the psoriasis occurs. It's perhaps felt, that's why it occurs more commonly on the knuckles, elbows, and knees, because those are areas of high trauma. Other precipitants would include an infection, such as a strep infection, which commonly occurs with gut tape psoriasis, weather, hot, muggy weather, where people may get in areas where the bra may rub, um, illness, uh, obesity. These are some of the major factors that are precipitants as well as medications. Some of the medications which tend to make psoriasis work include beta blockers like Indoral, cardiac medicines, as well as some medicines used for depression. How would one know if they have psoriasis? Most people, if they want to get the diagnosis, should see a dermatologist. A dermatologist is a subspecialty in which they are the experts in study of the skin, hair, and nails. What's interesting about psoriasis is that psoriasis can occur more commonly in the scalp, on the nails, or on the skin. And a dermatologist is expert at the diagnosis in all three areas. On the nails, you might see pitting, or little holes in the nails, as you see in this picture, a picture of pitting. You also see areas in the scalp, where there's a white scaly scalp. We call it a micaceous scale in the scalp, as you see in this picture. Or, as you see the common uh, plaque psoriasis, as you see on the body, as you see in this picture. Why is it important to see a dermatologist? because sometimes psoriasis can be misdiagnosed as a contact dermatitis, an irritation, a fungus. Particularly on the feet, it's often misdiagnosed as fungus. Also, when it involves the nails, it's commonly misdiagnosed as a fungus, and people often put on antifungal medications for months prior to achieving the right diagnosis. Why is that important? Because those medicines have a toxicity towards the liver, and there's no reason to be on a toxic medicine unless it's for something that you really have. Once a patient has been diagnosed with psoriasis, are there any precautionary measures that he or she should take? In other words, is the condition contagious? Those are two excellent questions. However, they're quite distinct. What I like to show my patients is I like to touch the patient and then touch it to my skin. After touching the patient with my finger, one of the plaques of psoriasis, and touching to my skin, they realize that it's not contagious, as I would not want to transmit any disease to myself. Um, so it's not contagious. This is particularly important in um, 
in relationships because if either partner has it, they don't want to give it to the other partner. Some of the precautionary measures that should be performed by a patient who has this is to avoid the precipitants. For example, if they have psoriasis, they may not want to wear a tight bathing suit because it may rub and precipitate psoriasis. Dr. Fox, you mentioned that psoriasis can be misdiagnosed, for example, as a fungus. Do all psoriasis look the same? Are there different types of psoriasis? Excellent question. Not only are there different types of psoriasis with different shapes and colors, they also present on different parts of the body. It's the most common is plaque psoriasis, which occurs in over 80% of the patients. These have white, silvery scales, the most commonly found on the, el on the elbows, arms, torso, and scalp. A second type is that of guttate psoriasis, which often occurs more commonly in childhood or sometimes after strep infections. These guttate psoriasis are teardrop. They're small little lesions. The next type would that be called inverse psoriasis, as you see in these pictures. These tend to occur in body folds, the underarm, the groin, underneath the breasts, uh, in the genitalia. And these areas are areas of high moisture. Next type is that of pustular psoriasis, where they have the white pustules. This tends to occur in certain areas, as the hands and feet. Perhaps the least common form of psoriasis is that of erythroderma. Dr. Fox, what forms of treatment are available for a patient with psoriasis? There are excellent topical treatments, oral treatments, light treatments, biological treatments. There's many excellent new treatments for psoriasis. The topical treatments include the mainstay, which is topical corticosteroids. However, even though that works quickly and without a mess, it can sometimes cause thinning of the skin. Other topical treatments include crude coal tar, salicylic acid, anthralin, calcium neuron inhibitors, and topical retinoids. Light therapy treatments consist of UVB, UVA, which is when, when we add sorrel into UVA, we call it PUVA, P and UVA, PUVA, as well as narrowband UVA. In our practice, we have found excellent success with the narrowband UVB. In addition, more recently, there's the Excimer laser, which is the 308 nanometer light, can help particularly stubborn cases which have not responded to several other topical treatments. Next comes oral therapies, which include ret retinoids, methotrexate, cyclosporin, hydroxyurea, and others. These all have much more side effects, which can be harmful to the liver or the kidneys in, in this specific case, and these require a lot of expertise. The last group is that of biologics, and these affect the, the T lymphocytes and, and the killer cells. So these have great promise, but these are very expensive. And usually when one comes off these therapies, these conditions tend to flare. In general, most insurance companies will only cover these biological therapies once the patient has failed many of the more conservative therapies. And all these therapies are covered in the right circumstances. That means when the patient qualifies for it, if they've tried the simpler therapies. Of course, patients should use preventative medicines also, such as avoiding trauma to the area, the appropriate use of moisturizers, avoiding any of the trigger factors that we discussed, and by, by doing those things, they may help prevent it from happening in themselves. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for asking me to be here, and thank you for all your wonderful work on behalf of all those patients with psoriasis.